Good morning and welcome to our service of morning prayer for the sixth Sunday after Easter. Our service begins on page 47 of the Book of Alternative Services. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will, will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, the Son of Righteousness has risen. O come, let us worship. We'll say together the Vanity on page 49. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy at the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. And we'll have our first reading. Our first reading is from the book of Acts. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Our psalm is 98 on page 836 of the BAS. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has been he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lifting up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the heart with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the land and all those who dwell with it. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. The second reading is from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burden, burden, burdensome. <laughs> For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. 
And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The third reading is from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. John said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go to bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands, so that you may love one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. An unusually irate parishioner is said to have tackled the rector after church one Sunday morning. I'm so glad you preached a historical sermon, she said. The rector, shocked by this unusual praise, beamed thanks. The parishioner continued, Yes, because I'm sick and tired of hearing about love all the time. It must really be difficult to be a Christian, and particularly an Anglican, if one has a problem with the love thing. In fact, if that is your problem, today might be a good Sunday to use the fast forward button. Parting gifts are difficult things to receive. This is particularly so after a death. We are amazed that Uncle Stan left us that enormous Victorian chest of drawers, particularly as he knew we loved modern Scandinavian furniture. It was a shock that Aunt Maud left us the lake house to the disgust of her children, or as is the case for some, to get nothing. We are now anticipating the Feast of the Ascension. Jesus was no longer to be a visible bodily presence among those who love him. Everything was going to change, and so he left gifts. We tend to take these gifts for granted. Baptism is one of the gifts. Baptism assures us that we are God's adopted family. God has left this gift in a will or covenant, an unbreakable agreement. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture, as the psalmist wrote centuries before. Notice that baptism is not a personal gift. It sets us in a community called the New Israel, the body of Christ. The trouble with communities is that they can get to fighting. Jesus gave us the Eucharist. Like baptism, it is a very simple thing. We eat bread, drink wine, and know it is the Lord. Once again, the Eucharist is not a personal thing. It is a community meal in which Jesus is made up or portrayed by the whole assembly or community. The trouble with communities is that they can get to fighting. 
The scriptures are God's gift to us. God speaks through the lives of the writers, and yet the community for whom the Bible is given can get to fighting. Jesus gave us the church, the community of the faithful, dead, living, and to come. The church is not a building where one goes to get something. It is the blessed company of all faithful people. Church is an activity towards God and others. It is a community. The trouble with communities is that they can get to fighting. Over and over again, we return to the context in which these gifts are given. That context is a community we name the church. We best know it here, now at the local level. Perhaps we know something of it as a diocese, or as a national church, or even beyond to the great Anglican communion. It would be odd if we didn't recognize that the great problem the church faces is human dysfunction. You've moved the candlesticks. I'm going to campaign to get them out where they have always been. I've worked so hard and no one has recognized me, so I'm leaving. The bishop is obstinate. If National Synod adopts this resolution, I shall refuse to worship God anymore. All the taking sides, quarrels, and sometimes nastiness that goes on suggests a radical dysfunction. Love is the ignored gift of God. The greatest gift Jesus gave us was love. He gave the gift and issued a new commandment that you should love one another. Without love, none of the other gifts is of any use. If our parish is loveless, it isn't a place of Christian worship. It's a damnable place. We have to remember what love means in the Christian vocabulary. It does not mean sentimentality. It does not mean warm, fuzzy feelings. In the epistle, the writer says some very profound words. Everyone who loves is born of God, for God is love. God loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. That passage may mean something like this. The capacity to demonstrate self-sacrificial love is a sign that we have been possessed by God. God's love is shown in Jesus' death, in Jesus' selfless gift of life itself, Sin, which means living apart from God, is destroyed. Sin is the ultimate dysfunction, the ultimate way of saying, I don't need you, and if I can't have my own way, I'm going to go home and sulk. When we start to reach out to others, particularly when it is inconvenient, when it hurts, when we have to suffer for it, God is obviously at work in our lives through Jesus. C.S. Lewis wrote, Love anything, and your heart will certainly be wrung, possibly be broken. The alternative to tragedy, or at least to the risk of tragedy, is damnation. The only place where you can be perfectly safe from the perturbations of love is hell. And yet the risk of love, the tragedy that comes from love, the death of all sorts of things that can occur in love, is more than compensated when we open ourselves together to that loving peace which is given with the knowledge and love of God in Christ Jesus. It is this shared, 
giving, dying, rising love which creates the church and sustains it, creates us in God's image and sustains us, and creates that good in the world which changes the worst for the best. Let us stand and say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Morning's prayer for the people will be on page 110, litany number one. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our bishops and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For this town of Vulcan, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have mercy. For good weather and for an abundant harvest for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, water, or air, and for the sick and suffering. We also pray this morning for our Gregory, our Archbishop, Bishop Fanuel in the Diocese of Northern Malawi, our sponsored student, Naomi, for Scott and Jenny Ramsey, missionaries to India, and the people of India as they battle the pandemic. In our companion diocese of the Woodward Islands, we pray for Holy Trinity, Castries with St. Mary, La Caye on St. Lucia, the Venerable Christian Glasgow. In our own diocese, we pray for the Christ Church Calgary and the Reverend David Pickett. In our own parish, we pray for Bill and Yvonne Smith, for all the children of our parish as they deal with the COVID restrictions, for those in need of our prayers, John Taylor, Mary Lou Garrick, Ethan, Howard, Joe, Graham, Krista, Heather, Rose Shortreed, B. Henry, Tim Thompson, Stephanie, Marion Green, Natasha, Jerry Sampson, Barbara Smith, Chris and Diane Vermeeren, Michael Hayter, Bruce Knight, Will and Jenny Pilon, the Wall family, Elsie and Ken Pizzoli, and Evan Taylor. 
for prisoners and for captives, and for their safety, health, and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who have died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering St. Aldham and all the saints, we commit ourselves to one another and to our, and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, our Lord. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you riches beyond imagination. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We thank you, Creator of all, for our mothers. We thank you for the life she gave us and for nurturing us all those years. Thank you for the faith that she gave us, helping us to know you. Thank you for the love she taught us to share, how to sacrifice for others, for teaching us about truth. Bless her this day with the graces she needs for today. Help her to feel precious in your eyes today and know that she is deeply loved. Give her strength and courage, compassion and peace. For those of us whose mother rests with you in the heavenly city, continue to shower her with your eternal blessings, that having finished her work on earth, she may now have eternal rest in you. We ask this in the name of him who himself had an earthly mother, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. Amen. Amen.